Bowden and Family Church. Good morning, everybody. Is it a good morning for you? Amen. We're so glad you're here today. It's great to be in the house of God. Are you ready to sing today? Oh, come on. Are you ready to sing today? <laughs> All right, here we go. One, two, ready. Yeah, thanks be to 
already here, but uh, in Jesus number two. Uh, uh, hallelujah. It's so good to see you today. Uh, turn around and tell somebody you look good today. I'm glad you're here.
said, God, I need you to pick me up and turn me around, change my heart. I like the words that said, I was just a vagabond. That's how we are before we become a son of, of, of God, before we become um, heirs with, jo joint heirs is what the scripture says, joint heirs with Christ Jesus. We're not vagabonds anymore. Jesus has rescued us. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, your praise is like, um, your praise is like perfume. In scripture, uh, all through the Old Testament, you'll read about how incense was burned uh, in the tabernacle and how it was a beautiful, beautiful fragrance to the Lord. But after the, the veil was torn, um, our praise becomes that beautiful incense to the Lord. So today what you're offering to God is holy. And today as we worship God, we worship him because he's God. And because he's always worthy. I know that there are times in our lives where we're going through hard things and we face things that we don't even know how it's going to turn out. But we worship anyway because God is worthy. And he's never going to stop being worthy. Hallelujah. We're going to sing today about the incense rising to the Lord.
trouble before? Have you ever found yourself deep in sin? Have you ever found yourself in need of a Savior? In need of something to get you out of the situation you're finding yourself in? No matter what it might be, it could be a physical problem. Maybe a health issue. Maybe it's a financial issue. Maybe it's an emotional issue. There's lots of issues. But I know there's one that can solve every issue yeah. known to mankind this yes. morning. Amen. The Bible talks about, and this thought came to me last night. We were all singing and worshiping the Lord, and, and the word came up, ransom. And I thought the Lord just, it just struck a chord with my heart, ransom. I had to look it up just to see exactly what ransom meant. It's not what the Bible says, but it's what Merriam-Webster has to say about it. It says, to deliver especially from sin or its penalty, to free from captivity or punishment by paying the price. Amen. Man, aren't you glad you know the one that paid the price this morning? Yeah. Aren't you glad you know the one that was able to get you out of that captivity, to get you, to bring you out of that sin and set you free. We sing about it this morning. He set us free. Yes. And who the Son has set free is free indeed. Amen. Thank God. Thank God. I also have a scripture for you. Just got to find it. Amen. Thank you for your patience and your attention. The Bible says, this is good and pleases God our Savior who wants all people to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man Christ Jesus who gave himself as a ransom for the people. Amen. That's the ransom that was paid. The blood that was shed on Calvary was the price that was paid so that we could have freedom from sin today. Amen. Can we give the God a hand clap today? Can we give him a hand clap? Amen. We're so glad you guys are here today. Amen. The folks that are online, thank you for joining with us. Amen. Be sure to let us know if you're joining online. Give us a quick hello. Uh, shout us out on Facebook, YouTube, wherever you're listening to or watching this morning. Amen. Our calling is to help you, and that's what we're here for. Amen. Know God. Find freedom, discover your purpose, and make a difference. Yeah. Amen. That leads us to the next subject I'm going to talk about, and that's fast track. Everybody say fast track. Fast track. Say it real fast. Fast track. <laughs> fast track. Amen. Fast track is your next step to finding your growth and your place. Amen. It's a program. It's all combined into one day. All right? It's not spread out over several weeks or months or years. No, it's just one day simple day to learn about our heart and our mission, to discover your purpose, and to find out how you can join the dream team. Got any dream teamers here this morning? On, Give a shout out, dream team. All right, and you can make a difference, so visit familychurch.net and click on to growth track to RSVP. Amen. Amen. Small groups. Everybody say small groups. Everybody say the kayak group is the best. Amen. Well, we all got, we got some awesome uh, small groups. Amen. And there's several to choose from. Uh, we got kayaking, of course, uh, fishing. Uh, we got bike riding. We got weightlifting. We got knitting. We got ladies and lattes. Whatever you might want to think up or dream up or maybe even come up with a new small group, that's a possible thing too. Amen. So get, your, uh, get the 911 on all that. Uh, last week, uh, Pastor Lesh, uh, thank you. Yeah, don't do 911. Please do not do 911. So last weekend, uh, we had the opportunity to go up and do some fishing. It's in a secret place. We can't tell you where it was. So anyway, we went, had a great time, uh, caught some fish. It's always fun to go fishing, right? But it's always more funner to catch fish. So that's what you're there to do, right? So amen. So check the dates with all these small groups. Um, we had a great time last weekend. Uh, we got Mexican Mondays. Uh, we just got all kinds of stuff that are happening around the church. We are changing our world. We are changing our world. 
And uh, there's a few ways that we're doing it right now, just to give you a little 411. Uh, Lifeline was here on Tuesday, and uh, our building was filled with guests uh, from early in the morning to well in the evening, and they had such a strong response that they are asked to come back in November. So mark that down on your calendar. We don't have a specific date yet, but November, they will be coming back for the life screening. Amen. Lifeline. Um, another way to make a difference is by partnering with us and with Winsville School District. Yeah, it's that time again. And through the corporate response of uh, sponsorship to provide free school supplies to families who are in need with extra help. Amen. The fair will be a drive through event again this year. So we are donating uh, to help out to the school to purchase and distribute the supplies. If you'd like to uh, give towards this effort, you can mark on your donation school supplies. And a huge thanks to the young people and the parents. I can give them a shout out. Give my hand. Amen. This Friday night, they went to Bristol Manor to encourage a few of our senior citizen neighbors. I heard they had a great time of singing and songs, and our students created beautiful cards to bring to them. Let me tell you, as one that works in that industry, that is huge. That is so huge, especially this time when a lot of the families aren't able to visit. So that was awesome. Amen. Um, so stay connected. Get the 411. Don't call 911, but get connected. 411, we want you to stay connected to Family Church. And by doing that, you can visit familychurch.net. Scroll to the bottom of the page to subscribe to receive email, text message updates. You can also share a prayer request or a praise report. And you can sign up for text updates by sending text me to 313131. The calendar for 2021 is quickly filling up, so visit that, and we will see you next time. You. Amen. Can you clap your hands unto the Lord? Say amen. God is good. Amen. It's good to see everybody this morning and everyone watching online. Amen. Give us a shout out if you're watching online today, and let us know what God is doing in your life and how he's a how you're changing your world. Amen. So thank you for everyone that's partnering with Family Church to just reach our community, joining the dream team and making a difference. You are making a difference. Look at your neighbor and say, you are making a difference. Amen. Amen. So God is so good. Hey, mark your calendars coming up uh, August 15th. That's just a couple Sundays away. A dear friend of mine, a dear friend of our family, and many of you know the Gaddies. Amen. They used to live in St. Louis. And they were actually part of Family Church for a many number of years. They helped and bless many people around here. They went to off to Maryland and planted a church there for 10 years. They've been just laboring in the fields of Maryland, making a huge difference in their traveling across country, and they're going to stop in and be with us that Sunday morning. You're going to enjoy their ministry. He's a graduate of Wash U here in St. Louis also, and uh, he's got more degrees than a thermometer, by the way. So, But uh, he's a smart guy, great communicator, and his wife, she's a phenomenal singer, and uh, we just can't wait till they are here. And they'll bless you. Great opportunity to bring somebody. Amen. If you're watching online, share. You want to be share and be sure to share that service with us and your friends there. Uh, thank you for giving. Thank you for being. Those who were able to come and be a part of Friday evening. Amen. Visiting the, the nursing home there in Winsville. Uh, there was a dear lady. Some of you may remember her. Um, her name was Valerie. Oh my. And. Uh, I met her from the first moment I stepped in the, the building, and she was there to the last moment I was there. She just joined in and sang with us, and she knew many, many of the songs. Amen. She was a worshiper, a child of God, and oh, what a blessing to know that she has continued serving God and just loving God, and just, man, we were so blessed by her. I was blessed by just being in her presence and just watch her sing and praise God. Amen. So thank you for going. Looking forward to going back. And she uh, is looking forward to our next time we get to go back and see us. So, so we're looking forward to that. This morning, if, you would, uh, if you're new to Family Church or maybe you're a returning guest, it's so good to have you today. Amen. If you're watching online for the first time, thank you. It's so good to see you. Amen. I just pray that God works in your life and encourages you today. Amen.
the odds are in your favor because you came with a need today. But if you are rolling the dice of the scripture, have you ever done this while you're praying? You just, God, answer my prayer request. You just fling open your Bible and you go, speak to me, God. And you look down and you think, oh, wow. Jesus wept. That means a lot, you know. (laughs) Amen. But you're looking for answers and you open the word of God and you just point to a page or flip a page, you know, you know. You know, God doesn't, God can work like that, but God prefers, I don't think he prefers to work like that. He simply said, and you may be, get lucky and hit that scripture says, you have not because you ask not. So this morning, if there's a need in your life, I just want to challenge you to take a step of faith wherever you're at. Say, Lord, here I am. I need you. I need healing. I need direction. I need you in my life. God, I've made some mistakes, their sins, their failures. I need your forgiveness this morning. I need the grace of God, and I know you do too as well today. So just take a moment. Close your eyes, wherever you're at. Lord, I just seek you today. I need you in my life. And just speak that need to him today. Lord, I need healing. I need strength. I need direction. I need consistency in my life. I need your mercy and your grace today. Whatever your need is, just share it with the Lord. Say, Lord, I need you today. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Amen. If you'd like to give this morning, thank you for just faithfully continuing to give weekly here at Family Church. We need your faithfulness more than ever. Amen. There's so many needs we want to continue to reach and to do more for Christ. Amen. If you've taken that step of faith and just giving your tithe unto the Lord, amen, thank you so much. But if you've not taken that step of faith and giving your tithe, amen, giving an offering here at Family Church, there's an offering envelope probably close to you. We have two offering pans up here on either side of the stage today. Or there's multiple ways that you can give today. You can go to familychurch.net. You can be a part of our text to give or just bill pay to have it sent here to Family Church on 1586 Dweller Road. However you choose to give, amen. I invite you online as well today just to pause and just open up that browser and just give this morning, amen. Could you pray with me? Jesus, we thank you this morning for your faithfulness and your giving, God. God, just, I've seen the firsthand difference, God, when we give unto you the difference you make through us in touching people's lives today. Amen. Let us take that step this morning and trust you and give. In Jesus' name we pray. Can you say amen? God bless you as you give unto the Lord this morning.
Clap your hands to the Lord this morning. And may hold up two fingers. Fingers, 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 fingers. Amen. Amen. This week I want you to pray for two people. Amen. I say two people. Look at your neighbor. Some of you aren't holding your fingers. If you're being disobedient to your pastor, <laughs> being rebellious. You know what they say? Rebellion is a sin of witchcraft. That's Bible. I know some of you are like, whatever. Oh, Jesus, we pray for you today. No, two fingers. Pray for two people this week. Amen? And, uh, and then watch this. You see that real fast? Got to make the noise. Invite them to church with you. Okay? The two people that you pray for this week, invite them to church. Amen? Bring them with you. Some of you have nobody sitting next to you. Amen? Fill your row up. Matter of fact, cause the people behind you to have to move back because you filled that row too. Amen. Jesus is coming soon. There's not a lack of people to bring to church. There's a lack of people to bring them to church. That's, Jesus said that's where the need's at. Amen. All of our classes, you may be dismissed today. High school, amen. Junior high, middle school, our elementary ages. God bless you in Jesus' name. If you're not sure where to go, just go in the foyer. They will direct you to the nearest location. Amen. 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 We're, when we kind of bring things to a close here, we're going to do a baptism at the end of service today. So if you're watching online, stick around. Amen. And uh, those of you in service, hang out with us today. Amen. And you'll see God do great things. Amen. Okay, so everyone left it here. We got a lot of space to fill, folks, okay? We got to get busy. Maybe we need to raise four fingers, right? So, amen. But, you know, some of us, I think we get, we're so, you know, we always talk about taking your next step. We talk, and, we, and that we kind of always, you know, put it around a, a thing of your new to family church, get to know family church, get to know our our vision, our ministries, and things that you can be a part of and use your gift and talents that God has blessed you with. And many people, they just, we just kind of stop there and think, you know what? But bringing somebody to Christ, winning somebody to Christ, teaching a Bible study, talking to them about attending church where they no longer attend church. Maybe they never attended a church in their entire life. We think God cannot possibly use that. I mean, look at me. Who am I that God could use? And, and, uh, but that's just entirely a lie. God used, I think he purposely chose some of the most oddball people on the face of the earth in Scripture as examples and how he can use every single one of us. I mean, look at, look at Moses in the Old Testament. Moses, yeah, he was, I mean, where did he start his career off? Floating on the river for his life, Right? And when then God used him, God, you, God, but look, but then God said, you know what? Look what I could do with you. I could send the princess of Egypt to save you and give you a proper education in Egypt so you know the customs and how everything rolls in Egypt. So, because 40 years later, you're going to come back and deliver your people. And then when he's, when he's 80 something years old, you know, Moses started his ministry. So, God, starts you out young, but he doesn't let you go, and you just mature and get gray hair. Your hair starts to fall out. And Moses even made an excuse. He stuck, God, I just can't talk really good. I'm a, st I'm a stutterer. I just can't pronounce words. Kind of sounds like me at times. And uh, but God used him anyway. God said, so I'll bring you Aaron. I'll give you a good walking stick. You know, we'll get things done. So don't disqualify yourself. And, we can, and that's just Moses. There's so many other people in Scripture that we could use as an illustration. I mean, look at the disciples. They were fishermen. They were rough. They were tax collectors. They were hated people in the community, but God used them. So, so look what God can do with your life. And I want to just challenge you this week to take a step of faith and start praying for somebody that you can let your light shine in your world where you can share Christ. Amen? Say amen, Pastor. I'm with you. Amen. Everyone say pray first. Pray first. 
Um, some of you heard, saw the announcement, saw the slide about 21 days of prayer and fasting. And some people like it just to stop it, 21 days of prayer. I'm all in. But you say fasting, they're like, oh dear. Oh my. Amen. 21 days of prayer and fasting. I just want to just drop that in your heart because next Sunday we're going to be just sharing it with all of our mind, heart, and soul. And I'm just asking every single one of you to join me during this journey of 21 days of prayer and fasting here at Family Church. If you're watching online, I want you to get involved. Go out and get you a journal, get you a notebook, get your hard copy Bible or your digital copy Bible. And let's get into God's word and let's get into prayer and let's make a list of some needs that, and some mountains that we want moved to see God move. Amen. People's lives to be touched and changed, healings to take place. I want to see the hand of God come down on Missouri, on our nation, on our world, and let healing and the light of Jesus just penetrate into the dark night. Amen. And we can do that through prayer and fasting, seeking the face of God. You know, uh, I was reading this week, and I found this great, great guy, this Cajun that loves to tell Cajun jokes, and I just read this one joke. I just want to tell, can I tell one Cajun joke? Okay, some of you don't know who I am if you're watching for the first time. I'm from South Louisiana. I literally grew up about 15 miles from the Gulf of Mexico, the heart of Cajun country, alligators, crawfish, boudin, shrimp, and uh, boudros and tibidos. As a matter of fact, boudro lived right behind me, and... Uh, and I went to Kibidos and uh, Duval's and uh, all, you know all those good Cajun people. But anyway, uh, Little T, uh, uh, Thibodeau's little boy, they called him Little T. And he said, uh, he was walking through the house one day and he had a candy bar, Little T did. And Mama T, she looked over at Little T, he was just munching on that Snickers bar. He was just munch, 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 eating that little candy bar. And she said, Little T, where did you... Now, yeah, your, your, your allowance last week, I know you spent that money already. How did you get the money to pay for that candy bar, that Snickers? And little T said, oh, mama, don't worry about it. Everything's all right. But that money for, 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 for Sunday school, that was to give in the offering plate. And little T said, mama, don't worry. Pastor was at the door and he got me in for free. That's funny, huh? That's funny. Amen. I would say prayer. It's more than just something we do and go through the motions. Have you ever caught yourself, you don't have to raise your hand, but I think all of us have been guilty as charged at time that when we're praying and, and, and worshiping sometimes, it's just all lip service. And our heart is just far away from God. Our mind is on something else. And we, we accidentally just pray and we're just kind of blah, 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 you know. That's really, we could be just saying the same thing, you know. And, but, 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 but I want you to realize that while we're getting to this season of prayer, that prayer is something more than just we do. It, it's a part of who we are. And I want you to understand this. It's not prayer is something we have to do. But I want to look at you to look at prayer as something we get to do. I want us somehow to get in our mind to create a culture of prayer, creating a lifestyle of prayer. That prayer is who you are. Prayer is a part of who you are, part of which is what you do. And it becomes a part of your family. It becomes a part of your daily activity. I want prayer to be so precious to you that before you even sit down at the table, nobody's eating, all hands are on deck, and everybody's waiting for dad or mom or little T to say the prayer before you get into food. And, 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 and but, but prayer is something as you wake up doing and praying and seeking God and having a relationship of God and creating a lifestyle of prayer, cultivating a, a, a prayer, prayer life in your walk with God. One of the greatest examples you find in Scripture is Jesus teaching about prayer. And I want you to look at this scripture with me this morning. And it's found in the book of Mark, chapter 1, verse 35. Now in the morning, having risen a long while before daylight, he, 
talking about Jesus, went out and departed to a solitary place, and there he prayed. Now, I want you to kind of picture this in your mind here. Now in the morning, having risen a long while before daylight, so it was, it was still dark out, Jesus got out of bed, put on his shoes, and departed to a solitary place, and there he prayed. Now, all of us have been to school. Some of you are teachers. Some of you have taught school before. You understand that we, we learned a lot from lecture, right? We see it, we read it, we hear it. But when a lesson is taught by example, it is very, very powerful. Many times I can't tell you what was preached to me 20 years ago, but I can tell you how that pastor treated me 20 years ago. God help me <laughs> be a better pastor outside the pulpit. Some people think, man, pastors, all they do, they work one hour a week, man. They got it made, dude. <laughs> oh, you know, this is the easiest thing I do all week, really. Everything leading up to the church service, crank it up. I was up here at 5 o'clock this morning, 5.30 this morning, getting things ready, making sure the baptism takes ready for the great baptism service we're going to have today, and, and, uh, and had a just wonderful week, just fellowshipping with so many different people here. But I want us to think about the examples that we leave, the example of Jesus that he shared with us. I think most people hear that you want an effective prayer life, but have an effective prayer life is, happens when you pray more than just every now and then. When it becomes a lifestyle, when you take time to invest and cultivate and lead with intent your day, how is your day going to start? For to better understand about a lifestyle of prayer, uh, we, we look to Jesus' example. And so look, kind of look at this verse of Scripture here in 35 here. You kind of break it down. Um, when you start developing your walk with God, your prayer life, have a certain time. Jesus got up early in the morning to spend time with the Heavenly Father. So when is or will be your prayer time? Think about that. Think about that. When will be your prayer time? Jesus gave a, a wonderful example of Scripture, amen, and, and I just love it. He got out of bed at a certain time. The book of Psalms, I love what Psalm says here, Psalm 63. Oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there's no water. So I have looked for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory because your loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise you. Thus, I bless you while I live. I lift up my hands in your name. My soul shall be satisfied with marrow and fatness. My mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. Verse 6, when I remember you in my bed, I meditate on you in the night watches because you have been my help. Therefore, in the shadow of your wings, I will rejoice. My soul follows close behind. Your right hand upholds me. The psalmist was letting us know, I get up early in the morning. I'm thinking my mind's upon the Lord and I'll seek your face. I came to the house of God, the church, and I was seeking you there at church also to see your power and glory stretched out and doing great things. And then verse six, he says, at the end of the day, when I'm in bed, amen, I'm just thinking about you, meditating upon the great thing that you did. In the night watches and times, I'm thinking about you and watching your work in my life. Amen. David was in a, in a wilderness place. Amen. So make a daily appointment with God. You're saying that's so silly to put God in my day time or my, you know, schedule my time with God. How busy are you? What do you got going Amen. Do we miss our appointments with God sometimes? Yes. But make an appointment with God and do your best to keep it. Amen. Uh, because it's going to change everything about your day. Everything's going to get better in your life when you begin to pray and seek God. Whether it's the first thing in the morning when you get out of bed and you're doing your daily routine. I know some people keep a Bible on their, on their table where they eat breakfast because that's their devotion time with God. And while they're eating their Cheerios, you know, um, they're just down in some, some Bible scriptures while they're eating breakfast. 
Amen. Or maybe it's at lunchtime where you're eating your Lunchables, you know. You're just getting after eating your ham sandwich and just getting the Word of God in your soul. Amen. Or maybe it's evening time. That's your best time to where the calm, the day has come upon us and the business, the running has stopped. Amen. Just whatever time of day it is, morning, amen, noon time, in the evening time, keep your appointment and just a little talk with Jesus. What? Makes it right. So I want you to keep a certain time, amen, that also have a certain place. Having a certain time of the day in the evening time where you pray, but then also pick a place that you can go to. It's your go-to place. It's your prayer closet. It's your special place where you have your time and your devotion with God. I'll tell you what, when I, have, when I seek God early in the morning before anyone has got out of bed, kind of like Jesus, uh, and nothing else is moving around, you've gone to that quiet, solitary place, there's no distractions, uh, it's a quiet location, amen, you, you leave some things behind, and you just take what you need with you, amen, it just changes the whole outcome of my day. My interactions with people are, are so much better. How I handle customers and people you work with, it'll be a revolutionary because your time with Jesus is making a huge difference. You'll be more patient with your kids, more patient with your spouse, more patient with the people you work with. You'll treat people different while you're driving down the highway. Amen. You won't holler out the wind as much probably. They'll think you're cussing them, but really you're just blessing them. Lord, bless them. Bless them, Lord. Bless them, Lord. Bless them, Lord. Amen. So having a certain time in a certain place. Jesus had a specific place when he went to pray. You know, some people like coming up to the church and pray at church. I know a buddy of mine, he, used to, he, couldn't, he didn't have time to go in the church, but he would eat his lunch all the way to the church, park in the church parking lot, read his Bible in the church parking lot, pray for just a few minutes, and he'd drive back to work, listen to worship music all the way here, all the way there back. Amen. Some people pray in their car. I knew this old preacher's story was told about him that he would pray out way behind his house. There was a, a big field, a big oak tree, and he would walk to that oak tree, and he would, that was his prayer area in the open air in the middle of the night. Amen. They said the coon hunters, they were hunting raccoons through the nighttime. Their dogs would be running through the hills, running by his back of his house. And they'd hear the pastor praying and talking to the Lord in the middle of the night while they were hunting raccoons. I remember a friend of mine, he, um, when he was younger, he stayed out too late often. And this one particular weekend, he had stayed out late. And um, he knew that he was past his curfew. You ever did that? Stay out your, your curfew? You're praying as you're coming up to the street, right? Lord Jesus, let my parents be sound asleep, you know. That, that was his prayer, you know. And so he parked his car, actually turned it off, and I think he pushed it up to his driveway So because his car was so noisy. But he's, he went in the front door, and he's going up the stairs to his bedroom. There's that one step that you always forget about, right? It squeaks. So he's going up the steps, and he hits that. He forgets that, you know, step number 10 or whatever made that noise. When he hits it, it squeaks, and he freezes. And there's nothing going on in the house. And what does he hear? He hear his mom. <laughs> She's in her bedroom, and what is she doing? She's praying for little D. He says, it just broke my heart. <laughs> he goes, it wasn't God, rain, hell, fire, and brims down on him for missing his curfew. No, it was, Lord, protect my kid. He's out and about doing what he's doing, but Lord, watch over him. Let him come home safely. Let his heart be Yours, Lord. Let him have you first in his life. Prayer makes a huge difference. Pray somewhere. Whenever you have your time of prayer, try to find a place where you could just be transparent with God and open with God. 
and just, will you take off your mask, take off your facade, just take off everything that we see most of the time. God doesn't want to see what I see. God wants you to take off your mask. He wants you to be real, open, broken, screwed up, in pieces, frustrated, confused. He wants all of that. He doesn't want, oh, Heavenly Father, thou art greatest among all, the creator of the heavens and the universe. Yeah, you can, you can pray in Old English if you want to, King James style. But, you know, I, I kind of prefer just Cajun Johnson. That's kind of where that's. God hears me. I talk like a cage, and I talk like Boudreaux, and I sound like a confused man lost in the swamp trying to hunt an alligator, you know? Just be who you are, wherever you are. Say, God, I need you. I want to pray. Show up in, in that solitary place, that place where there's no distractions. Your prayer closet. Be transparent with God. I mean, the psalmist, he got so bold to say it like this. Search me, O oh God. Have you got to that place in your walk with God? I want you to take that step today. Search me, oh God. Let God into your closet. God wants to see your dirty laundry. He wants to see the skeletons in your closet. Search me, oh God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. Another translation says, Lord, know my anxieties. Know the frustrations I have. Know the screwed up life I have. And see whether there be any wicked way in me. What the psalmist would say, Lord, is there any ways in me that, that I need to change? Is there any ways in me, Lord, that I need, to, I need to get back on the highway? I need to get back going the correct way. That's what repentance is. Let's say Repentance. Repentance is simply you're, you're walking away from the cross and you're turning around and you're walking back towards the cross. You've made up your mind, you've made up in your heart that, Lord, I want not to be just sorry for taking the cookie, but that I don't want to take the cookie again without permission. Not just sorry I got caught, but sorry that you don't want to take it again without permission for mom. That's what true repentance is. Lead me and lead me, Lord. Lead me in the everlasting way. God wants to get you back on the track. And that's what the opportunity we have to do with prayer. When we pray, God can work in our hearts and our lives. Have a certain time, a certain place. You, can, you remove the distractions. It frees you to worship and sing. I know that last night it was so much fun. We had a few folks, wonderful dinner, and a few folks were singing and stuff, and probably about 90% of us, we can't sing. That was there. There was like three people that could sing good, you know. The rest of them. I mean, Tyler's got an amazing, Tyler Johnson over there, baby. Man, the guy, he could sing. Woo! He was like one of the three people that could sing that was there last night. And uh, Victoria was the other one. So I think Victoria Ryan, yeah. Anyway, we had a good time. But, um, but you could sing. You know, that scripture, I, I kind of feel like that when my name is by the, the, the verse of scriptures, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, you'll see my picture right there when I sing. But when you move the distractions, you're free to worship, you're free to sing, you're free to turn up the radio and worship and just give God your heart, your life. You sing at the top of your lungs. Amen. Amen. So have a certain time, a certain place, and a certain plan. Have a plan when you go pray. And a lot of stuff we do is off the cuff. It just maybe comes to us from time to time. But that's why a prayer journal is so valuable. What is a prayer journal? Basically, it's a place where you write your favorite scripture. You write down prayer needs that are important to you or you know somebody that has a need and you're writing those down ministries, uh, you're part of the dream team. Maybe it's ideas for the dream team, things you want to accomplish and do, amen, for God. But have a plan. Jesus gave his disciples a, a plan. Jesus gave his disciples a, a prayer outline, if you please. We call it the Lord's Prayer. 
And as we pray every single day, play it. The plans include, you know, our plan can include worship music. We may pray. We may read the Bible. We may have quiet time to listen to God speak to our heart. Amen. But it doesn't mean it's going to look the same every single time. But that's why we have a plan. But we regularly connect with God. That is what is so important. The Lord's Prayer, we, we pray it in church. You may learn it as a child in, in, in kids' church. Amen. Some people pray it at religious events. But the, the Lord's Prayer is just so much more than we realize at times. Jesus gave his disciples an outline. They asked him, teach us to pray, Lord. When we, it, it helps connect us to God. It helps align our, our priorities with his priorities. It, and it helps us learn to depend upon the Lord, a man in our life. In Luke 11, the disciple says, it says here, Luke recorded, one day Jesus was praying at a certain place, and when he had finished, oh, man, wouldn't you learn, what would you love to hear Jesus pray? Wow. To hear Jesus pray. I mean, uh, one of the scriptures tells us that the worlds could not contain the volumes that Jesus preached and taught. But Jesus was praying at a certain place, and when he finished, one of the disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. Teach me to pray like that. And then in Matthew, he recorded the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. So for the rest of the sermon here and next Sunday, we're going to break down the Lord's Prayer. But number one, if you're taking notes here, I want you to realize he wanted us to connect with the Father. He doesn't want just us practicing religion. But God wants to have a relationship with every single one of us. You realize that you were adopted into God's family. We are his children. You're his sons and his daughters. Amen. He wants us to realize that he is our heavenly father. Amen. He wants us to call him Father. Amen. So when you pray, start acknowledging, I have a relationship with God. And he, he delights in us. Amen. As we reach out to him. Amen. Book of Romans says this. Paul said, you have not received the spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Instead, you received God's spirit when he adopted you as his own children. Now we call him Abba Father. You ever wonder what that word Abba means? It's just what a music grew back in the 70s. But, uh, but uh, it's, it's the Greek word for father. But it's kind of father with a twist. It's not just father, where's my allowance? It's like, daddy, I love you. That's what Paul was saying. We call him daddy, daddy. We have, because we have a relationship a loving relationship, a healthy relationship with our Heavenly Father to where we want to call him Daddy. You know your kids, they want something. You know your kids love you and you love your kids and they say, Daddy. They just hop up in your lap. They put your arm around. Oh, one of the greatest things I love is when my kids say, I love you, Dad. Melts oh, my heart. I'll just give them anything. I'll even give them my, my slice of cheesecake. I'll even give them my cheeseburger, they say that, you know. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. You know you love your kids to give them your cheeseburger. Woo, glory. Mm. Daddy, daddy. And that's sometimes what we do when we come to church. We're, the, the weight of the world, just the exhaustion that sometimes we go through, is we just say, Daddy, I need you today. The week I've had, I'm just strung out. I'm just, just worn out, Lord. I'm just, just at my wit's end. Dad, I need you. 
And oh man, I mean, it's like the, 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 the beggar on the side of the road, the blind man, and he heard Jesus was passing by and, and it was telling him to be quiet. The master's coming through. We want everything proper. But they didn't understand the condition this blind man was in. He'd been blind for a long time. So as they told him to be quiet, 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 he just hollered out, Father, Jesus, help me. I can't see which way to go to get to you. I'm blind. And he just kept getting louder and louder and louder. And Jesus went to him. Amen. You're his children. Have a time. Have a place. Make a plan. Amen. And have your relationship grow with him. Amen. Number two, if you're taking notes here today, worship his name. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be your name, Lord. Amen. It's, it's, it's holy. It's set apart. It's consecrated. God loves us when we worship him, and there's power in his name. Here's a list of some of the names I want you just to kind of maybe make notes of or take a picture of, amen, and, and, and realize and understand that this is who he is. Amen. God, he is righteousness. He makes us clean. God is our sanctifier. He has called us and set us apart. God is our healer. He heals all our diseases. God is our banner of victory. He has defeated our enemies. God is our shepherd. He speaks to us, reaches out to us, leads us and guides us. God is our peace. God is peace. He is our peace in every storm of life that we have. God is our provider. He supplies all of our needs. And sometimes it's so good to be reminded how good our God is when we take time to realize, man, he is everything to us. He is so much more, amen, than we could just absolutely imagine. And when I worship and give him thanks and praise, wow, it just opens up everything so much more. God is so much bigger, amen, than we realize. Proverbs says that the, the name of the Lord is a strong tower, amen, and the righteous run into it and are saved. So when you pray, share his name. Speak his name loud, amen, amen. Proclaim who he is in your life. He is my righteousness. He is my sanctifier. The Lord is my healer. Amen. Come on. He's my victory. What are you going through this morning? What are you going through this week? You need victory. Why? He's a God that defeats your enemies. Amen. You know, you know sometimes you just got to, I, I love to get out the book of Psalms, and I just start praying the book of Psalms. I just get a, a, you know, I found one of the worst days in David's life, and I just start praying about what he prayed about. Man, I said, man, David, he must have been a screwed up guy because, man, there's a lot of stuff he wrote that I can identify with. <laughs> but you need to realize he's your righteousness. When you make mistakes, he can cleanse you. He's your sanctifier. He called us to set him apart. If you're having trouble with sin, God can give you the power of the Spirit so you can be victorious and rise above the hangups and failures in your life. If you're sick, if you know somebody's sick, you can lay on the sick and pray in the name of the Lord, and he's their healer. He's your victory in time of trouble. He's your shepherd and comforter when you need direction in your life. Come on, he's your peace when the storms of life have filled your life. Amen. And he is your provider when your bank account's on zero or red. When you have nothing to eat, amen, he won't, he'll make sure there's bread. He'll tend to your needs in your life. Amen. Would you stand with us this morning here? God, I'm in such awe of you today. You're my strong tower, my place of protection and safety. You're my healer, my shepherd, my banner of victory. You're my peace. You're my provider. Oh, Heavenly Father, you're my righteousness. You're my sanctifier, Lord. You've cleansed me, forgiven me, filled my life with your spirit. Lord, your name is great, and I worship you. 
God, I desire to draw closer to you in this hour. God, I desire to draw closer to you in my time of trouble and needs in my life today. Would you close your eyes this morning wherever you're at? You can invite the, the, the high school class in this morning if you like. Amen. They're welcome to come and join us and pray today. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus, today for your forgiveness and your mercy this morning, Lord. I just magnify and glorify your name today. Jesus, you're everything to me. You're everything in my life today, Heavenly Father. I just give you thanks and praise your name for your faithfulness and your goodness and mercy today, Lord. God, I just magnify you today, Lord, in Jesus' name. Let's sing this chorus this morning, amen, as we just lift up the name of the Lord today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I bless your name. Are you hurting, broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin, Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Oh, oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was born.
thankful for your faithfulness and goodness today, Lord. I bless your wonderful name today, God. Lord, let them just know that you're real. Know that you're powerful and glorious. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, Monica, you can just have a seat right there. It's an exciting day, everybody. Amen. Amen. God is so good. God is so powerful. Amen. Monica has been around Family Church for a little while, and she's so just energetic and positive, amen, and loves the Lord and loves to help people. Amen. We had a great conversation about her walk with God and her vision and just knowing that God's a part of her life and that God wants to just do great things with her. Family Church, we're going to pray for her before we baptize her. Amen. And let's just ask God to bless her today. Heavenly Father, we just ask you to bless Monica and touch her life this morning. God, that this is a moment she'll never forget for the rest of eternity, Lord. The day that she put on Christ. Amen. That she follows you, Lord, today. That she's going public and declaring to everybody that she knows and what she'll ever meet are those that will just pass by. They'll know that she's part of of you, that she's been adopted to the family of God. Amen. That she's a follower of Christ. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Go ahead. With Monica, by the profession of your faith and obedience to the word of God, I now baptize you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. In Jesus' name we pray. We go down and we come back up and we rejoice. Rise into the newness of life. Born again in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, for those of you that have not been baptized, the water's perfect. We can baptize you right now. If you need to change your clothes, Amen. We'll get you a change of clothes. We got a towel that's still dry. Come on. Amen. Amen. Be sure to greet Monica. Amen. God bless you in Jesus' name before you head out this morning. Amen. Some of the young adults and some of the youth that I spoke to earlier. Amen. We're going to meet in the red room in two minutes. Amen. God bless you. Be sure to tell somebody hello this morning before you head out.